Motorways, dual carriageways and roundabouts are my three least favourite types of road and also the focus of my second IAM observed ride. A quick pre-video rant, one of the most frustrating things about learning to ride is that you're not allowed on a motorway until you have a full licence and then you're kind of just expected to get on with it having never really been formally taught how to use a motorway. As a result, I've only been on motorways maybe two or three times even though I've been riding for a year and a half because a year of that was on a CBT. So I'm really not very confident on them at all. But lucky me I guess, it just means I have to go out of my way to use motorways so I can practice them a little bit more. Now onto the ride itself, maybe to be expected I didn't really do too well on this motorway section, I'm okay getting up to speed but there were just way too many last minute lane changes, undertaking, it was all a little bit frantic in general. Lane positioning could have also used some work here, hanging out in position 1 isn't that useful because you don't have much of an escape route to your left and it also encourages cars to try and squeeze their way down the right. It also means that when you want to change lanes you have to move all the way from position 1 to position 3, then make the lane change, it's just a lot more work than being in position 3 to begin with. I think my instinct was to be in position 1 or 2, just so I'm quite far away from all the fast moving vehicles, but once I moved out into position 3 later on the ride, I realised I could actually see a lot further down the road, so it was a lot safer being there. Of course, when I'm talking about being in position 1 or position 3, it depends on what lane you're in to begin with, I'm just talking about this specific situation here. So my main things to work on from this little bit of motorway riding were lane positioning and also just cutting out all of the last minute frantic lane changes, planning further ahead, maybe less focused on speed and more focused on safety. One of the things about riding with the IAM and one of the things that's true on the test is that you can't break the law which means that you can't speed. And on a motorway if you're behind a car who's doing 66 or 67 it might mean just hanging out behind them because trying to overtake them at 70 means you're basically passing them at walking pace which isn't really that safe. So there's definitely a case for just slowing everything down a touch, spotting the information earlier and reacting to it a little bit earlier, and I think that'll make my motorway riding a lot more smooth. When it comes to motorways, like I say, I spent a year on L plates, so I really am starting from zero. I'm a little bit more familiar with dual carriageways, which is what we did next. Dual carriageways are a little bit similar to motorways, but a little bit less controlled, I guess. You can have learners, cyclists, that kind of thing, whereas you don't find that on the motorway. I'd say if you're uncomfortable with speed, you're going to have the same problem on some of the higher speed dual carriageways. But that's not too much of a problem for me, I was happy to get a couple of overtakes in, so I did pretty well in this section. I'd say I got a little bit frustrated by the lack of comms on this ride. At high speed, my mirrors tend to vibrate quite a lot. I can still see cars and things, but it's really difficult looking out for a tiny indicator, and I missed it a couple of times. I understand that you're supposed to check your mirrors and on the test that they don't use comms and that kind of thing, but honestly I don't know the route, I don't know where we're going, I don't know the signs to look out for. I think if I at least knew the junction numbers or the name of the places that I was looking for, I wouldn't get lost as often, it's really frustrating, kind of takes you out of the flow. But yeah, run over. The last bit of the ride was a lot better for this, it was just roundabout practice so I was just following road times all the way down and I knew exactly where I was going. I haven't done much straight line in the roundabouts, for a lot of these my observer took a much straighter line than I did, I usually take the curve all the way around but it's kind of unnecessary, if there's no other traffic around it can be safe to just keep the bike upright and go straight over the roundabout, but of course it depends on the traffic and the situation. I did alright on these roundabouts which was nice, I used to be a lot less confident on them, but I think since I've practiced them more I'm getting a little bit happy with them now. I haven't done really big complex roundabouts so I could still get out and practice more of them, but these simple ones are pretty nice. That was most of the feedback I got, so let's look at the run book and see how I did. So my final feedback wasn't as good on this ride as it was on my first ride, but it was still pretty good. Pre-ride checks and knowledge of Ipsco were alright. Observation scanning and rear observation could have used some work, my observer left the note here just to be a bit more aware of my surroundings. For take use and give information, it's always good to consider whether your indicator is actually a benefit or not. I usually just indicate I have a habit because that's the way I've been taught, but if there's no one to indicate to, you probably don't need to. Anticipation has that identification were okay most of the time, and not so much other times. Thought 3 was a little bit harsh on junctions and roundabouts, mainly it was just about planning earlier and maybe straight lining some roundabouts as well. Motorways were a 3, but that's what I expected. Overtaking was a 3, one time I overtook a car that was actually going the same speed as me, so I was just kind of stuck in its blind spot for ages, that kind of thing could just use some more planning. Speed and gears were all pretty good generally. Smoothness was okay, anticipation and planning could have used some work like I've already mentioned, hazard awareness and progress and restraint were both pretty good. Steering was okay, my feet could be up at junctions so my slow control needs a little bit of work, but that's something I'm practicing anyway. Knowledge of highway code was good, courtesy to other road users was good, and mechanical sympathy was also pretty good. Unfortunately, my development plan includes doing some more motorway miles, which obviously isn't the most exciting, but yeah, it's just the best way to get better at riding on a motorway, and a bit more comfortable. I just need to practice a little bit more anticipation and slow control, and other than that, it was all pretty good. It's not quite a full suite of one yet, but I'm sure I'll get there eventually, and I hope you're enjoying following along on my journey. Safe riding, and I'll see you in the next one.